Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Hazard Bay, written by Scottson. The mutants always have side sprams. This one screeches, its mouth nearly reaching the floor as it sprints towards me. As always, the sides and giant teeth make it top heavy. I duck under its awkward swipe, just barely nudging its skin legs with my boot. It tumbles over, and I place one shot in the back of its head. I shoot a few more times in the torso, because sometimes there's a little parasite in the chest cavity. Those have a habit of sneaking off and trying to eat your face when you think you're done for the job. Which is inconvenient. Talking below. Sounds like whispering and a judge, but under a foot of Jenny. I toss a few grenades to the side of the catwalk, not even bothering to look down. I don't have to. I know what's down there. Bad stuff. I know it's bad stuff, because you don't do my job for very long without noticing some patterns. Hi, I'm Johnson from Johnson, Jackson, and Heed Reclamation Services. Your research facility of questionable legality stopped checking in. Military cruiser has been missing for a decade suddenly drops out of hyperspace. Maybe that colony you just set up says they dug up some alien artifact and have started sending you some really weird mail. You want the mundane explanation, but you already know what's happened. Bad stuff. How do you deal with bad stuff? Nuclear fire, usually. But you spent a lot on that facility, or ship, or colony. Be a shame if you had to build it all over again, right? That's where I come in. For the modest fee, I clean up your mess the old-fashioned way. No delays, no hidden charges, and absolutely no questions asked. They say only a human can do this kind of job. I'd call those people racist, if they weren't absolutely right. Voices, like a thousand really drunk bees talking in unison, bubbles into my skull. It doesn't really say anything it hasn't said since I stepped onto the ghost ship. Join the eternal flesh. We will spread to all stars and all worlds. We are one. We are many. Blah, blah, blah. This voice is particularly annoying. And I blurt out, shut up, before the raving quiets down. A gentle, polite tone sounds out behind me. You okay? Jackson, my aerial combat drum, follows me everywhere and has seen nearly as much bad stuff as I have. Being a machine, you can't exactly hear disembodied voices, at least ones from a biological source. He hasn't really done much of this job, except perforated view of the abominations who thought it was a wonderful idea to sneak around in the vents. Yeah, this thing is just annoying me again. I turn on my communicator. Hey, Dick. There's the typical silence, followed by an annoyed trill. Yeah? Richard Dick Heed, my ship's pilot, uplifted cetacean. Complete ass. Knows how to fly a ship and can hack almost anything, though. Yeah, this isn't a rogue AI. You can probably relax with the cyber warfare stuff. The typical signs just weren't there. No weird airlock patterns. Every subsystem is mysteriously slave to the central bridge. No evidence of attempted EMP magnetic weapon use, etc., etc., Still, some of the smarter AIs keep either some of the crew or a live cargo around to fool you into thinking everything's dandy. The mutants could have possibly been a cover, but that theory's drying up by the second. Kind of disappointing, honestly. Insane AI jobs are easy money. Go in, find the core, turn it off, maybe deal with the onboard security if the ship is at top of the line. With a combat suit and mag boots, random airlock assassination attempts become a non-issue. I stop my advance up a hall. There's a dead scientist at the end of the hallway, slumped against the wall, his spectacles half hanging from his face. Seriously, does this hive mind think I'm stupid? 
I lob a grenade at the corpse. Like a cartoon, I can almost see its eyes bulge out of its skull as it scrambles to escape the explosion. It's partly successful, but that doesn't matter much when the incendiary flak catches its flesh on fire. When it comes to bad stuff, white phosphorus is God's tissue paper. Jackson's rapid-fire MAG cuts the monstrosity down as it tries to shamble towards me, and he makes the same crappy joke about keeping a man warm for the rest of his life. I keep walking, ignoring the room labeled lab, with the ribbons of flesh stretched across the tables and floor. I'm not headed to the bridge. Beginner's mistake. You're not going to find anything up there except a big egos, the PA system, and the captain that either killed himself or became bad stuff. Nah, big money's always in the main engine. The voice comes back, mutters something about ascension, then goes quiet again. I could track down the source of the voice. It's usually just a matter of finding the biggest, ugliest lump of skin that you can find and burning it. But that won't much matter when I open every airlock of the ship and everything except me suffocates. Turns out I don't even have to hunt it down anyways. Opening the engine room main doors, then immediately jumping back from the two mutants I knew would be there to ambush me. I tell Jackson to take care of them while I prepare the ship for cleansing. But there's a complication. There's always complications. Remember the lump of skin thing I mentioned? It's attached itself to the main engine. And, oh great, there's some kind of alien artifact stuck in its side. Can't get too close to it or it'll probably wipe my mind. The artifact also raises uh, questions. Either the artifact infected everyone, or the infection happened by itself, compelled everyone to find the artifact, and then that made everyone more infected. I don't know which annoys me more. I hear a blurted scream to my side. A plasma drill is forced at my face with a bleary-eyed miner. Cultists. Always with the cultists whenever these artifacts are around. It must have kept a few of the crew flesh for God knows what. Whatever. The cultists aren't particularly fast, and whatever ones I can't just knock over, Jackson takes care of. I meander my way over to the main engine's console and fall into my routine. Falsify a heat spike in the main engine room. Falsify rapid temperature rise on two more decks. Computer resumes catastrophic fire on board ship, then the dousing system has failed to control. Airlock safety locks are disabled as a last-ditch effort to extinguish the fire that doesn't exist. Bingo. Open all airlocks. I feel only the slightest of tugs as my mag boots keep me firmly planted against the rushing air. Mutants and cultists alike flail past me in a final effort to grab and pull me into the void. But none succeed. The suction of space also pulls the artifact out of the giant fleshy thing's side with a plop hurtling past me and towards the black expanse outside. Even when the snarling stops, I keep the airlocks open, not taking any chances. I can tell the sack of flesh on top of the engine is already having a tough time breathing, and I take that as my cue to message Richard. Dirk, airlocks are open, got some stuff in the engine room, but it looks like it's going to choke anyway. Okay, want a message to Origin Navy? In a sec, gotta make the final sweep. I hear a disembodied voice cough, with no other place it could have come from. I turn towards the mass. Sounds wounded and angry. Human, it snarls. Such an arrogant species. You've changed nothing. The eternal flesh style still reign victorious. You think I am the only one? I shrug. You things usually go solo. Yeah, wait. Are you a virus or did the scientists in here create you by accident? It ignores my questions. We are legion. We are endless. I see many pinpoints of light from the window. A dozen other warships dropping out of hyperspace, far more infected than the ship I'm currently on. Giant tentacles wave and writhe from the bowels of several of the vessels. Help! 
whole crusade has already begun, he paused. What can you possibly say against our holy army? With a click, I unholstered my good gun and pointed towards the closest thing the bad stuff has to a face. I say that this counts as hazard pay. There is a rumble, there is a scream, and later there is a payday. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.